Thanks for choosing Club Car, the world's most reliable and best performing golf car. You've made a great choice, and I'm sure you're anxious to start enjoying your new vehicle. Before you get out there on the course or on the road, there are a few things you need to know, or maybe just remind yourself of. We hope this video helps you get years of fun, safe, and worry-free use from your club car. When you received your vehicle, your club car dealer gave you an owner's manual. This manual has just about everything you'll need to know about the proper operation, care, and maintenance of your vehicle. We encourage you to refer to your manual anytime you have a question. Some of what we're going to cover in this video may seem simple, especially to longtime owners of golf cars. But reminding yourself of these tips can head off a lot of problems and extend the life of your golf car. So let's get started with some basics. To start the vehicle, turn the key to the on position and make sure nothing is in your immediate path. Check the vehicle's direction by placing the forward reverse switch in the desired position. If the switch is in the reverse position, an alarm will sound, alerting you and others that the car may be backing up. To go forward, slowly press the brake pedal to automatically disengage the park brake. Now press the accelerator pedal a little more to increase the car's speed. Here we go. Most of what you need to know about driving or riding in a golf car is common sense stuff like operating the golf car only from the driver's seat and not the passenger seat. Also steering clear of trees and low-hanging limbs and remaining seated while the car is moving. If you're a passenger, also keep a good grip on the handholds. It's best to avoid steep hills, but when you must drive on a slope, go straight up and down the slope if possible rather than at an angle to keep the car from slipping. You should also avoid sudden starts and stops and abrupt turns. Not only could they cause injuries, they could also damage the vehicle. Slow down when you encounter wet grass or rough terrain, or when you approach a turn. To stop, press the brake pedal with your right foot. Then firmly press the park brake pedal until it locks. This will prevent the car from rolling forward or backward. If you're going to leave the vehicle, turn the key switch to the off position and place the forward reverse switch in the neutral position, then remove the key. If the car is going to be left unattended in an area where children are playing, it's also a good idea to put the car in the tow position. You can find the run tow switch beneath the front seat. By flipping the switch to the tow position, you cut all power to the car and prevent the car from being started even with a key. Properly charged batteries are one of the most important factors in the performance of your golf car. Improperly charged batteries can lessen the lifespan and affect the performance of your car. Batteries should be fully charged before heading out to the course or around the neighborhood. Before charging your car's batteries, you should take several precautions. Since lead acid batteries contain explosive gases, always keep sparks and flames away from your vehicle and never smoke while charging batteries. As we all know, battery acid can cause severe burns, so wear protective clothing, rubber gloves, safety glasses, and a face shield to keep acid away from your skin, eyes, and clothing. To charge batteries, connect your charger to a 110 volt outlet. Then insert the charger's DC plug into the vehicle receptacle. The charger will turn on in just a few seconds. Make sure the plug on the charger lines up with the vehicle plug. If the charger is not working for any reason, check your power supply first, then the circuit breaker on the face of the charger. If the amber battery warning light on your car's dash comes on, that's an indication that you have less than 25% of a full charge tells you it's time to charge your batteries again. A 25% charge is usually enough to get you through one round of golf or about five miles. By the way, don't worry about overcharging batteries. 
when the amount of energy needed to replenish the batteries is returned, the charger shuts off automatically. Like most things, batteries need water to survive. Improper fluid levels can cause batteries to fail prematurely. To prolong battery life and performance, check the water level in your car's batteries periodically. If they need it, add distilled water to the batteries, but only after the batteries have been fully charged. While not enough water can adversely affect battery life and performance, overfilling can be just as harmful. Refer to your owner's manual to see an illustration of a battery when it has been filled to the proper level. Once every week or two, use a one-to-one -one solution of baking soda and water to clean the tops and terminals of your car's battery and keep them free of corrosion. Rinse the solution from the batteries without allowing it to enter the batteries. And then check to make sure the terminals are tight. Some of the same precautions and safety measures you take when fueling your automobile apply when adding gas to a golf car. First, make sure you turn off the vehicle by moving the key switch to the off position. Then wait for the engine to cool before adding gasoline to the fuel tank. Never add fuel if the car is near an open flame, and as we said earlier, never smoke while fueling your car. To locate the fuel tank, which is on the driver's side of the vehicle, lift and remove the bottom seat cushion. Remove the fuel cap and fill the fuel tank with fresh unleaded gasoline. To allow for expansion, do not fill higher than one inch from the top of the fuel tank. And be careful not to spill fuel on any part of the golf car or yourself. Replace the fuel cap and tighten securely. Replace the seat bottom. Now you're ready to go. It's important to keep your car looking its best. Besides looking bad, a dirty, unkempt golf car can also hide other more serious problems. When cleaning your car, be sure to use the products recommended in the owner's manual. A firm plastic bristle brush is great for removing fine sand and dirt from tires, floor mats, and other textured surfaces. We discourage the use of silicone-based products such as Armorall on floor mats, pedals, and seats. These products can leave surfaces slippery and contribute to accidents. Remove battery acid, fertilizer, and anything else your car may have picked up from the course or the road as soon as possible to prevent possible stains and permanent damage to the vehicle's clear coat. We recommend using only automotive grade, wax-free cleaning products applied with a clean, soft cloth on your car's smooth surfaces. When you're not going to be using your golf car for an extended period, make sure you store it properly. Before storing, you'll want to make sure the car is fully charged. Also, check the water level in the batteries and make sure you have the maximum amount of water in the batteries without overfilling. Keep the charger connected to the batteries and place the tow run switch in the tow position. It's best to store your car inside a protected area with proper ventilation if you must leave your car outside, make sure it's covered. On a gasoline-powered golf car, also turn off the fuel shutoff valve. The bright red shutoff valve is located on the fuel tank. Club car vehicles are known for their reliability and durability. They stand up to most anything the course and golfers dish out but that doesn't eliminate the need for regular maintenance and inspection. A periodic inspection should include a quick check to make sure your tires are properly inflated. Our recommendation is between 19 and 22 PSI, depending on your preference. By the way, if your car stays parked in the same spot for an extended period, tires can get what are known as flat spots, and you may notice a bumpier ride than usual the next time you drive your car. These spots usually smooth out after the car has been driven a few times. Also check that your batteries are filled to the proper level. Once a year, we also recommend a thorough service performed by an authorized club car dealer. We hope you found this video helpful. Each of the subjects we've discussed in the video is covered in greater detail in your owner's manual. 
you don't find the information you need in the manual, we encourage you to contact your authorized Club Car dealer. Thanks again for choosing Club Car. We hope you enjoy the ride.